as the big one at 5.15. Grade one action here at Aintree this afternoon. Let's get details of the next with Richard. So this is the Poundland Magal Novices Chase. Two miles is the trip. Once again, it's a grade one contest. It's for the speedy young chasers. Who prior to this season have not tasted success over fences, but in some cases are now pretty experienced. Number one is Amarillo Sky for Brendan Powell and Colin Tizard in the Lost in Translation colours we'll have later on in the National. Two is Edward Stone, stamped himself as the best novice chaser when scoring in the Arkle at the Cheltenham Festival. Tom Cannon for Alan King. Three is for Pleasure, Keelan Woods and Alex Hales already had a good week for pleasure amongst the outsiders here for Premier Plastering. Four doesn't go, Fugitive. Now we're on to the J.P. McManus pair. First number five, Gentleman to Me. In the first colours, colours that any second now will carry in the Grand National. Mark Walsh riding for Willie Mullins. Paul Nichols saddles number six, Mick Pasta. Hooped colours again of green and gold. This time a green cap with a white star. Harry Cobden and Paul Nichols have tasted success in grade one company every day so far this week at Aintree. Number seven is third time lucky Harry and Dan Skelton for Mike and Eileen Newbold the black colours with the white cross of Lorraine white sleeves Dan almost certain to go through the two million pound prize money for the season barrier this afternoon two miles is the trip six runners for the Poundland McGull novices chase this Edward Stone very popular six to four on the professionals are on the double Edward Stone in this race and flooring Porter in the next and around 11 to four three to one if you shop around the double seven to four on Edward Stone gentlemen to me four to one nine to two third time lucky and 25 to one bars we continue to the national Eclair soft popular at 14 to one run wild fed was 20s into 14 and school by hours 40 to one on Thursday now into 25 to one school by hours what a five in the race for JP McManus who always uh, says if you uh, fail to prepare you prepare to fail Welcome back to the paddock for another grade one and the horse we want to look at here is this lad Edward Stone when I say he looks good in his coat I mean look at this sometimes at this time of year the horses haven't come through with their summer coat but this lad having had a pretty hard season he's won five races already this year and he looks fantastic here in the paddock Ryan Price leading him up has done a great job and Avery, Robert Avery and Ian Thirtle who bred this horse together having had a point to point mare now enjoy the extraordinary journey of a Cheltenham Festival win and on to this wonderful meeting. Can he bag another Grade 1 today? Isn't he a picture? Well, just imagine that you don't only own Edward Stone, but you bred him as well. Robert Avery is here, Ian Turtle is here, right, and, yes. and boys, only one thing, breeding and owning completely another. Yes, well, it's, we had a couple of point-to-point -point mares, and we decided to breed them, and we sent him to Kate, sent him to Kate Ara, and um, this is the result. And it's kind of fairy tale stuff, then. Yeah, it is, yeah. I think if we were looking at it from the outside of someone else, we would say so yeah I mean it's just it's beyond any belief it's beyond any dream it's just a uh, just so lucky to have a horse like this turn up with a third time in I think yeah and you went to the arc all strongly fancied now most people just think you will win today does that make it tougher for you um oh I, I, yeah maybe I, I'm not sure we, we are relaxed because it's not many come and do the double so if it doesn't come off and you know we still love the horse and he's yeah. still a great horse to us anyway from everyone on ITV good luck thank you very thank much thank you very much thank you, thank thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck to them. I'm afraid the news from the last race is the news we feared. L.A. Bell did have to be put down after sustaining a fatal injury close to the finishing line. So sad for owner Suzanne Lawrence. Bex Coles looked after L.A. Bell and the Skeletons, of course, as well. And the news on Captain Conby. Captain Conby was assessed by the vet team and has walked into the horse ambulance to go back for further assessment. Any more news, we'll let you know. <laughs> Tell us about Edward Stone here. He was such a good winner of the Arkle. And looking at him in the paddock, he is a gorgeous horse. Yeah, he's a gorgeous horse. And he's also quite an intelligent one, uh, Francesco, when you watch him. He's a straightforward horse to ride. Tom Cannon was able to ride him just behind the pace in the Arkle at Cheltenham. Um, he got in beside Rivadier at the Tell, who was the grey and Warlord, the other grey. But it's as a second fence he shows his intelligence because Brave Shaska is going to fall here in front. But watch Edward Stone. His ears flick forward. He looks at the horse on the ground, completely changed his own 
legs and steps around him you'd love to see a horse with that movement of its feet and at the second last fence he's able to get in good and close here for Tom Cannon and doesn't miss a beat but at the last fence without Tom even asking him he has a cut of his own accord comes earlier than Tom would have thought and he runs out a really good winner I think he'd be very hard to beat here today I know AP that JP has gentleman to me in he's Willie Mullins's. he likes to bowl along is that just going to set it up for, the, for Edward Stone yeah maybe so not just gentle uh, not just gentleman to me but also for pleasure likes to go a good gallop the one thing about this horse we see in the picture Ruby as you said he's a brilliant jumper he's very intelligent he looks like he stays very well there's nothing not to like about Edward Stone yeah it's amazing isn't it to, when you talk about a horse looking intelligent even just yeah. going around the paddock he's got those ears forward the big bright eye just taking everything in and the way he was able to dodge the horse on the ground there impressive and seems to really love his racing too yeah he does but you know fences have been the making of him he used to be a little bit keen and wanted to go faster than the jockey wanted him to but now with the bigger obstacles he's backing off them he's looking at what he's doing and you know like you say that's a real good sign going to be plenty of pace on here that is for sure you can see Amarillo Sky up front Brendan Powell who rides Fiddle on the Roof in the Grand National and there's also Mark Walsh he wants to be very very handy as well you can see the favourite just on the outside there so that you can see plenty of daylight So runners start at the entrance to the back straight and unlike the hurdles course there is a fence on the side of the course so they will be trapping when they reach the first because there are a couple of horses who really do like to make the running here. Gentleman Demi is the first one to break the line and heads past the starting point with Amarillo Sky for company. Edward Stone races in third for pleasure ridden a little bit more quietly this afternoon in pink and white with third time lucky Mick Pastor taking a fierce hold as they swiftly reach the first but without any mishap. Gentleman Demi it is who leads from in second Amarillo Sky in the yellow and blue. The short priced favourite is Edward Stone, dark blue with the lighter blue sleeves. Third time lucky in black and white, then towards the inside for pleasure in the pink jacket. And nose bandit Mick Pasta is last of all as they reach fence number two. Gentleman Demi just guessed at it slightly. Heading towards the third, it's an open ditch, which means there is a takeoff board slightly in advance of the fence, giving it a slightly bigger spread as Gentleman Demi reached for that. Got to the other side, the second Amarillo Sky. For pleasure in third place, Pink Jacket, horse with a white face. Edward Stone in fourth, just ahead of third time lucky. And Mick Pasta is last of all as they make their way towards the fence that in circuits time will be the last in the Magal and out in the lead, Gentleman Demi. Heading towards the fourth, Amarillo Sky gave it plenty of daylight. For pleasure, third time lucky and Edward Stone. Just about line across the course in third, fourth and fifth. Edward Stone just now moving forward to shade third position. And Mick Pasta is at the back of the six strong field. So now quite a sharp turn, the chase course on the inside of the hurdles course. And that'll carry them into the back straight. There are eight fences still to take, half of which will come in the next half mile. Gentlemen to me, heading on towards the next Racing in second place is Amarillo Sky. For pleasure, with the advantage of the inside, sharing third place with Edward Stone. This gentleman to me sees a good stride of that. Amarillo Sky made the mistake, drops back into that chasing cluster. This gentleman to me opens up a lead of three lengths. Mick Pastor is still at the back of the pack as they head towards another plain one. Gentleman to me out in the lead. Amarillo Sky, third time lucky in Edward Stone. For pleasure's lost a little bit of ground on the inside. Horse in the pink colours, relegated to last by Mick Pastor as they race towards the second of the three open ditches. Gentleman to me saw a really good stride, but Edward Stone is so fast through the air that he jumped alongside briefly Amarillo Sky, then third time lucky in this quartet, just getting away from Mick Pastor and for pleasure. Last on the far side, Gentleman to me warning to his jumping task. Edward Stone poised on the outer of Amarillo Sky. They've completed a circuit and they have four fences left to take in this Poundland McGull novices chase. Third time lucky is in fourth place as they exit the back straight. Two lengths to Mick Pasta and two lengths to For Pleasure. They haven't lost any more ground as Edward Stone's just dropped off Amarillo Sky. As they race towards the fence on the side of the course and Edward Stone was booting that third time lucky. He survives losing a pedal. Harry Skelton <laughs> great shot. He's taking a while to get it back. You can see him reaching down with his left hand just trying to get his foot back in the iron as he was perched on one 
inside as they race towards the third last. Gentleman Demi, Edward Stone on the outside, third time lucky, and Amarillo Sky first in the home straight. Edward Stone was asked up, and is still to get to Gentleman Demi, who leads and still is travelling comfortably. Edward Stone and third time lucky, Harry Skelton did so well to keep him in the race. Last ditch is two from the finish. Gentleman Demi is in close, and Edward Stone lands with some momentum and now throws down his challenge, but it's all a little bit laboured at the moment, and Gentleman Demi it is who finds a little bit more. Uh, stargazing slightly out in front, third time lucky is done with, but Edward Stone still has not got past Gentleman Demi, who heads down towards the final bench in the Magal with an increased advantage of four lengths. Edward Stone is over in second, but it looks a vain pursuit. Then third time lucky, but it's Gentleman Demi driven out towards the line, who is going to make all the running in the Paula Magal for Mark Walsh and Willie Bollins in the JP McManus colours. Edward Stone's colours lowered in second place, third time lucky in third, in fourth place for pleasure. Across the line, Nick Pasta, and last of all is Amarillo Sky. Gentleman to me, it is.